So that's basically about the heavy duty ones. The funny part of the story, um, I can show you some other features of it as well. Um, cause we have some further videos in that respect. So just to show you the endurance of it. is watertight, as you can see. automatic if you don't know what to say. <coughs> and 
then there is three inductive sensors in the whole block, one at each end and one somewhere about a third in the way. And then the ball passing through this capillary, rolling free, rolling freely, uh, the runtime is measured. The runtime is proportional to the viscosity of what is in there, basically said. Um, that's the easy principle. So there are more viscous, there are less flowing assemblies, the longer the ball will take to run through a distance. There are less viscous, so there are more flowing in this. Uh, they are shorter the ball will need to go through it. Uh, benefit is, this is a very small assembly, so you do not need a lot of sample. Uh, it can be filled automatically, it can be filled flow through, it can be filled manually, so this is quite nice. I'm uh, not going to go into all of the details. What is interesting is the dynamic viscosity. So the viscosity of your interest is depending on a constant uh, tender density of the ball, which we always know. You have to enter that if you put the ball a certain batch of balls to use. And then if you have, if you want, otherwise you only get the kinematic viscosity. If you want the dynamic viscosity, you need a special sample density. And here it comes in that you can integrate this module in the density meter. Nevertheless, it is enough for most of the samples to have a three-digit density. So if you only have money for a lobbyist and the DMA35, this is fine. But then you have to manually enter the density value in this case. Um, so what are possible rest density is a question. Questions here for, time, for the dynamic viscosity. So if we know the density with sufficient uh, accuracy, it can be manually entered. No big question if you ask for the density value uh, once you uh, do the measurement. On the other hand, we can do a simultaneous measurement of the lowest, this module, together with the density uh, module in a density meter, and everything will be calculated and displayed on the screen accordingly. And finally, if you do not need that accuracy, you can run the density measurement with another DMA model. Most of the times the portable one is suitable and then you manually enter it again. Um, if you do polymer applications, they are very often just do a relative viscosity measurement, so they compare the viscosity of the solvent to the solvent of polymer. Uh, you don't need any density because it's just a relative measurement in that case. Um, why do we have three inductive sensors? Two would be sufficient for making measurement short, for example. Because um, we have a long and short distance in the capillary, if you have something very viscous, it's most of the time enough that the ball just passes the first and the seconds of the short distance and not the full distance. Basically as well, on the time it needs to go for the short distance, if you set the system an automatic inclination, uh, it will calculate and guess which is the best uh, uh, angle to get the proper high quality measurement in that case. So we are uh, better and more accurate than competitor instruments in that test. Um, aside that, we use inductive sensors. What is the funny thing about that? If you will, we use optical sensors, if possible. The problem is, uh, in a park liquid, you won't see the ball. We use a steel ball in inductive uh, setup, so every time it passes the inductive sensor, we quite easily can um, uh, trace it even in a part or dark liquid in there. So this is quite nice. Uh, handling and filling can be done in three different ways. You can fill the capillary outside the capillary block. So you fill it, you put the ball in, then you move it in the capillary block into a measurement. This is especially important if for very precious samples for samples which have high value or I only have a little sample because then you can use so-called short capillaries. What we normally recommend if sample volume is not a question is flow through filling. Then you fill from a syringe which is connected to the capillary in the capillary block where the ball is already in. And if you have a lot of samples, you can connect it to an auto sampler uh, or example auto samplers where uh, you can automatically fill it. Uh, the auto samplers do have the possibility to even include automatic cleaning issues. So that's a big thing. Uh, if you uh, have possibilities to fill the system. I was mentioning especially for very precious systems and another benefit of our module, uh, of, our, of our three sensors is the short capillary. 
which starts from only 100 microliters of volume because this is only called a complete capillary, it's just using that part. So if you have something extremely expensive or only low volume, only manual filling, of course, you can use that here. Um, that's quite nice. If you have something corrosive, we can only use glass capillaries. We can as well just use PTFD capillaries, which are more chemically resistant against some corrosive substances. Uh, it just depends what you need, uh, which is quite nice. There is a system, uh, a, a variation which can go low temperatures, but this is actually in the range of battery production. Um, so not really in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, good thing about this is filling this <coughs> Through uh, the flow through system, you have the sample in the syringe, basically no exposure, no dangerous exposure to the user. You fill it through the tube into the capillary, and that's it then at the end. So there is no big handling of uh, corrosive, aggressive chemicals in open beakers, and so on and so on, because the outlet of the capillary can directly be connected to waste. So you are not exposed to dangerous chemicals in that case. Um, what are the main configurations? Main configurations are quite easy. It's either the low is alone, you see it looks quite similar to the density meter, but it lacks this point of where the density cell is. Then we have the connection together with the DMA density meter, so it's the module placed inside the uh, modularity bay of the density meter, then you connect both of them together, and then you feel at the point of the density meter, you feel the capillary, this goes to waste or something else. Speaking about modularity. And this is if you have a lot of samples, this is the combination of a density meter connected with an outer sampler and the lowest module on top. So that means if you have a lot of samples, you can measure that way in that case here, uh, like that. One of the other application, uh, pharmaceutical industry. Um, we have one customer, I mean we have a number of customers using that for that, but one of the customers is just 500 meters away from our headquarter, which is the company Fresenius. They do uh, make infusion liquids. Uh, one key thing of the infusion liquids and injection liquids is uh, to have proper distribution at the point of entry into the bloodstream. Uh, it, it has, it's not allowed to be over a certain viscosity. So they measure this infusion liquids with the lowest, combined they measure the density for concentration determination, and we do have uh, as well a turbidity module, this is not working standalone, they as well measure the turbidity of their sample and even the pH. So out of one filling of the outer sample they get density respectively concentration, a turbidity value, a pH value, and the viscosity value. And all is displayed here on that screen. There's no computer in the back, and they very traceably, uh, 21 CFR part compliant traceably, um, get these values. Another thing is, protein solutions do uh, have a certain viscosity, uh, biopolymers for infusion, blood plasma products, or something like that. This is your typical application as well uh, for the lobbyists in pharmaceutical industry. Um, not going to go in much detail in here. Some references which we have not only in polymers, but this is like BISF, L'Oreal, the Max Planck Institute, Pfizer, Wacker uh, Chemistry, uh, a lot of other more. So everywhere where we have chemistry, uh, where we have pharmaceutical applications, you can use the lobbyists uh, as a tool. Chemical industry, one of the key things here is uh, inkjet printer ink. This is a very low viscous ink, but the ink viscosity is interesting for the droplet formation when you print it. Uh, if you have a sharp printing picture, you need to know the viscosity, they are using um, the lowest in that respect. Same accounts for chemical solutions, where you have to reach a certain distinct uh, viscosity in that case. Uh, I'm going to go into that, uh, but just some names which are uh, referenced. Uh, application in the R&D section, so uh, physical properties of solvents, of solvents with just one thing dissolved. What is a good thing is the combination we can do. So we can combine a density meter, viscometer, refractive index, and the pH meter. One measurement, one filling, three minutes to basically uh, 
all your uh, values, um, which is a quick introduction about the pharmaceutically low volume, low viscous uh, viscometer, and which this together. I want to go a bit in one of the benefits of our combined instruments. Um, overall, the whole product mention. We now spoke about density measuring, measuring rotation, measuring refractive index, measuring viscosity. If you would need to measure all of these things separately and you have instruments of separate suppliers, you would have four instruments on your bench. Uh, you would have to fill four times, you have four times the possibility for a feeling error, you have three or four times the effort because someone has to feel four times and start at four times and so on and so on. And you need a lot more sense. Anton Bar instruments can be combined to modular systems without, in a good share of combinations, the need for a computer. So a lot of our instruments can act as a so-called master instrument for the others. Uh, where are industries where this is used? Flavor fragrance industry, they need density, optical rotation, refractive index. Pharmaceutical industry, I was just telling about the possibility with Fresenius who measures density, respectively concentration, viscosity, pH, and turbidity. Food industry, paper industry, quality control of raw materials and final products and intermediates. What is typically combined is a density meter plus a refractive meter. Because when you have density and refractive index, sometimes you combine density, refractive meter, polarimeter, and this is a third party polarimeter. Um, but normally, um, bar instruments, they work seamlessly without a computer to be talking to each other. Um, for the density meters, we do have some additional modules which do not work on its own, which is, for example, the turbidity meter which we have, which gives, comes from the beverage application. Uh, nevertheless, you can combine it, as I said, already in the bay of the density meter, the viscometer. Uh, or you can connect an outer sample and then connect the rest on top of it. Big benefit is, with that you can build up systems which measure density, viscosity, refractive index, optical rotation, pH, which is a set module not working on its own, turbidity, and so on and so on, out of one run, out of one sample filling on one screen of the DMA. You have one conclusive report for all of that, uh, which is quite nice. And all of them can be pharma qualified. Uh, so what you always need is a master instrument. The density meters, the refractive meters, and the polarimeters can act as master instruments. Um, so there, on their screen, you will then see and control all of the other values. Um, Typically, combination is density plus refractive index in this uh, This is as well, the big ones are a bit harder to integrate, but the small MCPs can easily be connected to a density meter. And as you can see, the footprint is fitting that way that you can place the other map of the small polarimeter on top of the density meter. So you do not use up so much space in the lab at the end. The lowest is actually if you needed a module in the DMA uh, or a module on top of a DMA example configuration. So this is very, very handy and very fine. Uh, the example is the name for our uh, sample changes. They all work on the principle of uh, uh, rotation here. Um, they are plug and play. You just put them into the module bay of the instrument small footprint, there are some available the sample recovery, there are some available for filling high viscous samples, um, and you can even program them that they do an automatic air check in between two measurements. <coughs> if needed, um, they can be even equipped with a barcode reader, so if you have a lot of instruments, a lot of samples which do have barcode coding, you can store that through the barcode reader um, as well. So summing it up with modularity, and the bar instruments give you the opportunity to have up to seven parameters of non-destructive measurement, reducing the measuring time, 
all will be in one file, one printout, one report, so no collecting of seven reports, but just one single thing. And instruments to have a small footprint because a good share of them can be staked to each other, meaning low, tube, low volume of tube connection in between, very nice, very fancy. Uh, if uh, you have expensive sample or not much sample, uh, so this is quite nice and quite uh, uh, good if you need it. The other benefit is that you have a higher overall measuring quality because you only fill once but get up to seven parameters. Uh, it's under bar quality instruments and from that master instrument the data can easily be transferred out to LIPS, so <coughs> the laboratory uh, information management system. And if you have really, really high sample throughput, you can even connect a barcode reader for sample identification. So it saves you time, it increases your quality, it saves space and it saves costs. Because as I said, one filling up to seven measurements in one fillet. So this is what we call a modulizer, making use of the modular capabilities of our bar systems in that sense. So, We are always 